subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel tell me me max 3 first impressions now this is a max phone so cut me some slack if i get a few things wrong here because this is the first time i've been using a xiaomi phone for a long time i might not even be pronouncing that correctly but i gotta tell you one thing this phone right here is one crazy good value I got this thing for 285 bucks, and these are going for around 300 bucks. Now, what's significant about this? The size of this display. This is a 6.9 inch display here, and this comes with a 5,500 milliamp hour battery, a 12 megapixel plus five megapixel dual AI camera, and a Snapdragon 636 processor with four, or you could get it with six gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigs. This is the four gig and 64 gigabyte ROM. Now, the Snapdragon 636 is actually in the family of the Snapdragon 660, which BlackBerry put on the key too. And we all know that phone, even with a mid-range processor, performs well. So this one, I've been finding it to perform quite well as well. So the iPhone XS Max, labeled the Max phone, actually looks tiny in comparison to this Xiaomi Mi Max. Now, these phones aren't comparable at all when it comes to spec. We know the XS Max is a much more powerful device, but look how tiny that thing looks comparatively to this Xiaomi device. 6.5 inch display, and this guy is a 6.9 inch, more like a seven inch display. This is a huge Max type of device. So let's take a look at it next to the Galaxy Note 9, another big, device now the galaxy Note 9 is a pretty tall device so it kind of stacks up pretty nicely next to this phone but it's still pretty small in comparison on the display to the xiaomi mi max 3. so this device is just so much screen for the money okay so this display is full hd resolution 350 pixels per inch now to put that into comparison with something the iphone 10r is going to launch with a 6.1 inch display and has 326 pixels per inch, just like the iPhone 7. So this phone has actually a higher resolution than the upcoming iPhone 10R, and it's also an LCD display, and it's also much larger with more pixels per inch. Now this device runs MIUI, like 9.5 or something like that. It has Android 8.1 Oreo, and I've been finding it to run pretty smooth. This MIUI or MIUI is pretty light. It doesn't have a lot of junk on it, especially if you get the global version of this phone like I picked up. This one doesn't have all that Chinese bloatware on it. This one was just pretty clean. It had the Play Store on it. It does have a few of the My UI, Me UI services on the device, but still, you know, it, it's it's pretty clean overall. You don't even have to use that stuff if you don't want to. And I've just been enjoying the heck out of this phone just in the past few hours I've been using it. Now, if you look at that wallpaper, it kind of looks like that one from the iPhone 10 when they first launched the phone. I really love when a phone manufacturer puts a nice amount of wallpapers. And this phone definitely does that. Look at all of these guys right here and then if we go over here we have a bunch of animals on the wallpapers as well so that's pretty cool and then there's a bunch more down here creative wallpapers and you can see right there it takes a second to load that's where you're going to see that this is not a flagship phone loading things instantly but still what half a second that's okay it's not the end of the world for half a second but just some beautiful included wallpapers on this device now, I've been trying out the camera a little bit, and you could see that camera looks almost identical to an iPhone XS camera or an iPhone X camera. And um, it's not quite as thick on the camera hump, but it still has a camera hump. This camera, you can definitely tell that it's not flagship. I've already been trying it out. It's definitely not a flagship camera, but I wouldn't expect that at $299. Now, in terms of the back, it's like an aluminum feel. It feels exactly like the OnePlus 5 and 5T, and the color is identical to that matte black on those phones. So if you get the black model, it feels just like this. This phone also comes in gold. So if you like that gold color, then you can get it in gold. It's like a lighter gold with a white front. Now, I also want to note that even though this is a, a non-US phone, I have T-Mobile, and I'm still getting LTE on this device and i already made some calls and people said they heard me just fine so it actually works in the u.s on gsm carriers if you get the global version like at&t and t-mobile you just might not have as many lte band support so if you're in a fringe area or an area that's just not very you know large like a big city you might have issues with your carrier connection to lte but if you're in a big city 
then this, this can actually work out probably just fine for you. But if you are gonna pick one of these up, do check the band support before doing so. So a little bit back to the performance. So the 636 CPU is clocked in at 1.8 gigahertz and you could definitely tell it's more of a mid-range kind of device, but it's not slow, like it's super usable. There's no like big hiccups that are really gonna make this phone unusable whatsoever. And I think that it performs well enough to actually be a functional day-to-day -day phone. So, you know, it's not gonna give you that super great gaming performance. Some games might lag on this device. So if you're a gamer, you might wanna steer clear of this one. But there's an alternative to this phone if you want like a gaming style device, and that would be the Honor Note 10 from Huawei. It's also a 6.9 inch display, and it has a much better processor and GPU, but this is even cheaper than that phone. That phone's about $600 or so US. Now, this guy has 64 gigs. I had like 50 gigs with the ROM installed available. I put the 256 gigabyte card in this phone and it took it just fine. So you can expand the memory up to 256 gigabytes as well. This also has Bluetooth 5.0, something you're gonna see on flagship devices. And the real big thing so far that I've been noticing is the battery, the battery, the battery. 5,500 milliamp hours. This thing, I've actually had it off the charger for about, I'm gonna say about two and a half, three hours now. And at 98%, it's already at 90. 8% in like three hours, that's nothing. This phone is easily gonna go about two days if you're a light user. If you're a heavy user, you might use it up throughout the day, but I'm I'm already thinking I'm gonna get like 11 to 13 hours of screen on time with this device. Now, this phone can also shoot in 4K video. Now, the selfie camera is eight megapixel f2.0 and it could do 1080p video. In terms of this camera software, it actually reminds me a lot of the iPhone. You have video, short video, photo, portrait square mode and panoramic and you also have a manual mode pretty nice to see on a more mid-range budget device one thing that's not so great about this mi max 3 though is the weight it weighs 221 grams so it's pretty much the heaviest phone you're gonna buy right now there is heavier probably devices but this one is super heavy so that's one downside to getting a such large device but because this has like that 18 by nine style aspect ratio, this thing doesn't feel like a seven inch phone that you would have got a few years ago. Like a few years ago, you would get the 16 by nine, seven inch phone, it would feel like a tablet. This is actually manageable if you have a decent size hand. And if you don't have a decent size hand, you do have one handed modes on this phone as well. So this device also has a second screen mode where you can go ahead and do things on a second screen. Like if you pass your phone off to somebody and you don't want them seeing your information, you can have a second space right here to protect your privacy. So this thing also has a few features like you can change your themes out on this device. You can also do full screen applications. You have gesture control like this, like what you would see on an iPhone. You can just hold like that to get to your applications. They go sideways just like Android 9 Pie, even though we're not actually in Android 9 Pie on this device yet. So that's it, that's the Mi Max 3. You're definitely not gonna like this if you already thought like something like the 10s Max looks way too big because this phone makes the 10s Max look puny. Like we can put the 10s Max right here and the 10s Max will disappear out of existence just like that. Some things I do wanna mention are kind of a downside to this device is that you don't get wireless charging. You're not gonna get like IP68 water resistant, but you do get quick charging and you do get it in the box. It does come with an EU charger. So if you're buying it in the US, you're gonna have to get an adapter for the like the US plug. Or if you're in another country that uses a different type of plug, you're gonna need to get an adapter for that country as well. You're not gonna get things like stereo speakers, the best cameras in the world, but this display is actually quite great. It has pretty good viewing angles. There's not really any blue shift on this display. I mean, it's LCD, so you don't have to worry about burning. And so far, it just seems to work pretty well, even though it's only about 299 or so. So in conclusion, it just kind of boggles my mind what you can get today for such a low price versus what you can get today for, you can say, a higher price point. I mean, so phones these days, it just seems like you can get so much value for so little, and it makes you wonder, is it really worth it? But Really, where a flagship phone like a 10s Max or a Note 9 or one of these more premium devices are going to be worth your time and money is if you're not buying the other gadgets that complement your lifestyle. So what I mean by that is a camera. 
if you don't buy a camera, you don't have a camera on the side, or you have other phones with a good camera, you might actually get your money's worth out of having the best camera on a smartphone. You're not gonna have the best camera on a smartphone with a Mi Max 3. If you want support for a very long time on your phone and you want it to hold that value, sell it off later, that's where a flagship premium phone like an Apple device will still be worth it. And if you want some of the fastest processing in the world, some of the best AI you know, implementation on a device, and just some of the more innovative features in the technology world, you really can't beat the iPhone XS Max here. I mean, especially when we're talking about these two right here, like a budget phone or buying, you know, an Apple device. And all that that I just said about that is pretty much similar with the Galaxy Note 9, except for those software updates. But still, like, you're not going to get all the superior technology you're going to get in the Note 9 and a phone like this. But this phone is just fun. It just makes you feel good. It just seems like you get so much of the essentials, the basics, everything you really need. And the big thing on this phone is just battery life. It's ridiculous. You can say, but you have to deal with that ridiculous size. That's okay. So that's the Mi Max 3. This is a Max phone. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, let me know down below. But I got a question for you. What do you guys think of these cheaper entries with large screens, some of these Chinese phones, some of these other budget devices like the blue phones that come out? What do you think of these more budget to mid-range phones? Do you like these devices? Do you think they're much more worth it? Let me know your thoughts. Hit the thumbs up.